All right, you should be ready to go, Sarah. Thank you very much. Hello and welcome. Uh, you should be able to see my PowerPoint, the start of my PowerPoint uh, screen right now. Um, <clears throat> we're gonna get started with our uh, workshop today on tools to support independent living, taking care of your home. <clears throat> uh, my name is Sarah Giffen Hunter. This will be an hour long and hopefully there'll be time to ask some questions and uh, talk about some of these tools. We are broadcasting from Pacer Center. Uh, like I said, my name is Sarah Given Hunter. I'm an assistive technology specialist. And um, Paul Sampt is here with me today. He's doing my tech support. And we are both um, from the department that is called the Simon Technology Center at Pacer. And uh, there's an email address there. You can email me directly with questions about today's presentation, or you can also um, contact the Simon Technology Center at that email um, with more general questions about our, our services. So today we're, we are presenting in Zoom webinar and an archive of the workshop will be on YouTube. But we encourage you to share in the chat um, any questions that you have. Paul will be posting in the chat um, links to the handouts. Those were also sent in the reminder email that you should have gotten from Zoom. And um, at the end, he will post a link to the workshop evaluation. And I believe there's also a pop-up within Zoom for you to do that. Um, anyway, if you have any technical problems, shoot it in the chat to Paul and he can help you with that. Um, if you have questions, he will pass those on to me um, during the presentation. And um, if you change the little um, chat thing to so that it goes to all attendees and panelists, then you have comments um, you can share with everyone. That's always really great. If you have ideas or um, suggestions of tools that you've used, it's really nice for other people to be able to um, see those as well. A certificate of attendance is available for attendance in today's workshop. Um, if you are watching it live, that is March 2nd, um, between 2 and 3 p.m. Central Time. Um, when you watch the archived um, version over YouTube, we are not able to give a certificate of attendance for that. So if you are interested in a certificate of attendance, it's important to know that you have to submit the evaluation at the end. So watch for that link um, to our SurveyMonkey evaluation. <clears throat> so, um, PACER, if you have not checked out our website, I encourage you to do so. Um, this just kind of gives an idea of how many different kinds of programs we have. PACER has programs for all different ages and all different um, kind of life situations and different types of disabilities. Um, and we support parents and families, families of adults. Um, children and professionals. So there's a, just a wealth of resources and publications and um, things like that on our website. So for today's workshop, there are two handouts. Um, the first one is just the PowerPoint handout. So it's just a handout of these slides. If you're interested in that, um, here's the link you can use or the QR code is the thing that you can scan with your mobile device and it will open that link for you. And the second one is what I would say is more important. That is the tech list or like all the resources that I'm going to be talking about and, and demonstrating today. That is a tech list handout and that is um, very helpful for you to have. I'll just show you what it looks like. <clears throat> it's just got all the tools, the apps, the tools, in order that I'm going to be talking about them. And then it gives not only like pricing information, but also um, links to find out more information and just like a um, some basic notes to help you remember which one you know that you saw that um, you liked or might wanna look back to to find out more about. So that checklist handout is um, important and Paul probably has that uh, link in the chat. <clears throat> so I encourage you to go ahead and have that open on a screen if you're able to. 
All right, I'm going to go ahead and um, move on from this slide. If you still need to get those handouts, just um, look in the chat and uh, or if for some reason you have trouble accessing that handout, I know that they are they are accessed through uh, Google Drive. Um, let Paul know that he's also able to uh, send them via email if if that's a problem for you. <clears throat> OK, so today's topic um, is household tasks. So for um, an individual to become more independent, what household tasks do they need to do? They um, probably need to wash dishes, clean the bathroom, um, make the bed, do your laundry. So of course, these are all um, tasks that we want our young people to start learning to do when they're still at home with us and um, practice those and then be able to at some point, um, whatever um, level is appropriate to be able to transition to doing those more independently, whether it's in their own apartment or just doing those more independently um, living in the home with you. <clears throat> so those are some of the things that we're going to kind of look at as examples to support those kind of household tasks. So these are the kinds of um, categories of tools that we're going to look at today. One is just basic reminders. On um, the next is timers. And then task directions is a really important one. Um, there's some, well, a lot of tasks just have a lot of steps. And if you've never done them before, or you've never done it on your own, um, it might be really helpful to have, you know, really specific um, support for those different step-by-step uh, -step, um, directions. And then a visual schedule is kind of similar, but kind of builds upon that. And then I also have a section about audio and visual props for tasks. Okay. So at this point, I'm going to uh, move into demonstrations and I will be sharing my iPad with you um, um, in order to show you those demonstrations. And um, <clears throat> some of the apps are um, Apple only, that's where it says iOS only, that's for Apple. Um, but that does mean you can do it on an Apple phone or a, a larger um, iPad. And then same thing with the ones that are also available on Android, you can have it on a smartphone or a tablet. So, but this is just how I'm demonstrating them. And I know that some people um, in the past have asked about Android alternatives. So I did include some of those. Um, in the handout and I have, and um, because there's a, a few really great apps on here that are only um, for Apple. So I did go in and look for a few to include in there. Um, so you can look for that on the second page of the handout if you are an Android based um, user. So let me go ahead and share my iPad. So you should see my iPad now. And the first um, app we're gonna look at is called Ada Reminder. It's a really simple app, but I really like the way that it's um, organized. It's this uh, red one here with a check mark. <clears throat> um, this is just Ada Reminder, but you know, it's a little different than just a regular reminder kind of app that would already be on a smartphone. It is much more visual and it is more, has more variety as far as audio prompts, which is really nice. So um, there is a free version or there, or it's just a $1.99 to have the full version. And the, um, the free version does limit how many that you can make. So you might see that notice um, come up, but <clears throat> here is um, so within this you can use your own photo if you want um, or you can use they have a nice um, nice stock images in there so this one um, like take out the trash um, I can edit that and you'll see what that looks like so one thing to notice is there are a lot of different options in here so like I said, it's a lot, a much more robust um, kind of reminder app than, than the standard one that is built in. 
So here you can see this message. So what it what it says, what it's called, you type that in. Um, so now I don't think that in particular is, so that's not read out as the reminder, but it could be. Um, but you could um, uh, type out more information if you wanted to. So that's kind of handy as well. So um, if I want a little more detail in there. And then um, the image, I was able to choose the image from, um, or where it said custom app, custom image, that would be like taking a photo. So you can go out and take a photo of your own trash can or whatever. Um, but here you can see kind of the variety of images that are available. There's the trash can one, but kind of nice, nice that they're kind of large and that they're kind of colorful. Um, so I like that. And then I will show you the sounds, a lot of different sounds, not just a standard like alarm or something. Um, so just open it just so that you can see the amount of variety. Here we go. You can even record your own voice. You can record your own music. Pretty great. I think there's some young people that would like to have their favorite song, remind them to take out the trash. Um, but then I'm gonna just scroll down here so you can see how many different things. Um, another thing that I really like is that it shows you how many seconds the reminder is. So if you have somebody that has some, you know, needs some additional sort of attention um, prompts, then you're not gonna choose a sound that is one second. So it's kind of nice that you can see like, oh, there's, there's some that are quite a bit longer. So this, this one that I chose is a 16 second. Um, hopefully you can hear that. Um, pretty uh, attention getting kind of sound, so that's nice. <clears throat> and then on down, so you can choose the date, what days of the week. So for like a weekly task that you have to remember every Sunday. Um, and then you can even do this much detail like auto snooze. So um, based on the individual and how much um, they, they delay or procrastinate, you can have it snooze 10 minutes, three times, um, so that it will keep prompting and reminding them. So that was kind of a, a long um, demo, but I just wanted to show you. And then over here on the side are just all the different kinds of timers that you can do. So a one time, this, this take out the trash every Sunday is a recurring reminder. A voice reminder is just simply, you can set it up as anything and then you can record the message. <clears throat> Again, kind of useful if, if an audio prompt is really what you're needing with some detail about a certain um, you know, task that needs to be done. Um, and then this is what the calendar view looks like, things that are daily. Um, you can see them on the, on the calendar. I just have the one feed the cat, so that's why that looks like that. So that is Ada Reminder. And what I'm showing you, this is a free version, but like I said, the, the unlimited one is just $1.99. So if you try this and you find it useful, then you could um, do that. Okay, so the other thing um, for reminders is um, I just wanna show you just using the calendar. So just whatever calendar is built into your, to a mobile device or even on a laptop or whatever. But on the, in Apple, I can create a, an event and just use it as a reminder. So I could say, pay the, um, pay the internet bill. <clears throat> so this is the default, it's setting it to like today, this time, but let's say it's due on the 15th of every month and I want to do it in the evening. <clears throat> and, and then if you have not used calendar alerts much before um, in on Apple, they have a nice um, variety. So here's all the things I can I can say every month but I actually wanna do a custom one. 
And so frequency, I would say monthly, but I don't, but I don't want to do it. Um, yeah, no, I do want to do it. I want to do it on the 15th, on the 15th. I'm going to do it on the 15th of every month. But as you could see, there's also options for things that like those events that happen like the second Tuesday of every month or whatever. So that's kind of nice that you can go to that level of customization. So there we go, new event, add it. And there it is, pay internet. And I didn't set an alert, but you can set an alert for that. You can see at the time of the event, save for all the future events. So now there's an alert set. Um, and I know that that's gonna come up every time in the month. It's gonna give me an alert that it's time to pay my, my internet bill. <clears throat> And I think I find that a little easier to use than um, like the actual reminders app, which is a little bit more like one time kind of reminders, which is what happens when you do Siri, which I'll show you later in the um, presentation. Okay. <clears throat> Whoops. Okay. So that was eight, a reminder, and then using your smartphone or tablet calendar or built-in reminders. Next thing we're going to look at is timers. And I have some physical timers here that I'm going to show you. Um, the first is um, time timers. <clears throat> a lot of people are probably familiar with time timers. They're the physical timer that has the red or other color disc that shows uh, that you set to the amount of time. And um, these are really helpful. Um, a lot of uh, clocks anymore are, are digital and that doesn't really um, help uh, with someone that has a challenge with time, doesn't really help our perception of time as well as the actual visual um, you know, uh, disc. And you can watch the size of the disc and you can see it, you know, have that physical rep representation of um, the passage of time. So um, time timer makes a whole lot of different um, sizes and styles. This one that I'm holding right here is a little mini like three inch. Um, and you can have the, the, the uh, audi audible alarm on there or you can turn it off. They also made this little whiteboard thing, dry erase thing here that slides in the top. So you can put on there you know, clean your room and then set it to 15 minutes. So it's just a little, a little visual reminder of what you're supposed to be doing while this is still red. Um, I, I also brought, just to show kind of the difference, a little bit larger one. And this one is a 20 minute. So that, um, I don't know if you can see that very well, but it goes up to 20 minutes. So that means that it's sort of like a little bit um, uh, more, it shows a little bit more the passage of time by a larger dial. Um, so that might be helpful, different color. Um, all of the physical devices that I'm showing you today are from our lending library, which I'll talk a little bit more at the end. Um, but these are all things that you can borrow and purpose of that is to just trial something and find out if it works. Um, for your individual um, needs before you would purchase it. So that's a great thing to do with a timer. Is this gonna be helpful um, for this task management? And then we also have, we also have um, this one with the dry erase board. <clears throat> so um, someone that can read <clears throat> can see that they clean their bedroom for 10 minutes. So they set it to 10 minutes. When that time is up, then they need to do sweep floors for 10 more minutes, and then even build in something like a reward or uh, like gaming time, 20 minutes, and um, just really adding that, that structure and those time reminders. And then we also have time trackers, slightly different uh, concept in that, it has a, a green, yellow, red light up um, approach as opposed to the visual um, dial. 
So this one, there's, there's two different sizes. This is the mini, and then there's one that's like twice as tall. And um, this one, I'm gonna turn it on on the back. It's kind of uh, bright in here right now, so I don't know if you can see the light, but um, this is these dials, I set the time. And um, so I can set the green to show for 15 minutes. Now it's lit up green. And then, um, <clears throat> so this could be used either for say, um, it should take you 15 minutes to um, clean the bathroom. And so they know that it's helpful as a guide, just, you know, it should not be like go in and clean the bathroom and two minutes later you're done. So as long as it's green, you need to be in there um, doing that. And then the yellow um, tells you that it, the time is almost up. So after 10 minutes, this will turn yellow. And then when the time is up, it turns red so that they know it's over. And I think it flashes red and beeps. Um, this is also a really great one to use for um, <clears throat> city. They've done their tasks and it's time they can have a reward. So if this one um, means uh, it helps with the transitions. So if someone is doing a video game, you can set it for 20 minutes and then give like a 10 minute yellow um, so that they know that, and I would just set this right on top of their computer or their TV or whatever, so they know when it's yellow, that is the time when they're to be mentally and physically preparing to transition away from that activity. And then when it flashes red, they're getting the message that, that that's time to stop. So that's the time tracker. <clears throat> And then I'm gonna go back to the iPad and show you an app. That is called the multi-timer. What is this one with the multiple little clocks on it? Go ahead and open that. This is a really great little app that is um, free or can be um, purchased the um <clears throat> the pro version but the the free one really is very robust and you can do a lot with it um here you can see it's called multi-timer because there's multiple timers um going on there and um you can set different kinds of timers and you can uh let me just open one of these Okay, so uh, uh, when I tap and hold, I know you can't see that, so I just wanted to um, describe it. It opens up this little menu and I'm gonna click on edit. <clears throat> so I can choose the color. I can choose um, auto repeat, overtime, um, take a stretch. I can, here's the label. I can type in whatever I want, okay. Let me go to a different one. So here's um, put laundry and dryer. So I can tap it to start it. I can also um, swipe open with my finger so that it's larger. And, um, <clears throat> and then you can um, choose the icon that you have here. So there's a little shirt there. And this is the kind of thing that is, um, you know, it's hard to remember when you put your, your clothes in the washer that then you have to go back and switch them over into the dryer. So um, this also has a visual um, timer. It's, it's 45 minutes, so it's kind of slow, but this will continue to go down and around. And with, in addition to the countdown number, it will show you a visual of how much time is left. <clears throat> you can pause it, you can reset it. Um, even lock it so that they can't change it. I'm gonna pinch it back in so that we can see the other timers again. You can keep that one going and you can start another one. So let's say you start your lunch one. So you can have multi, uh, multiple timers going at a time. And um, if we open that one and edit it, um, then we can see, uh, I'll just show you. you can choose the different icons and you can search for different icons in here. 
um, and then the different alerts. And in, in this one, you can even record a voice alert. That seems like that's a new feature, but here's the different kinds of alerts um, and how long they are. So that's nice too. So that's multi-timer. And um, then, I wanted to show you the different kinds of timers. I don't even know what journal is. Let's see. Edit. I can't find it. Oh, here it is. Change type. Oh, at the very bottom. There, just so you can see the different kinds of timers that it has. <clears throat> count down, count up. Um, Pomodoro is where you get like a, a break um, at every 20 minutes, um, a lap timer counter. Yeah, so a lot of different kinds um, built in there. Okay, so that is multi-timer. <clears throat> Go back, back to my PowerPoint. Timer. And the next category that we're going to look at is task directions. We've got three different apps to show you on, on this category. <clears throat> Magnus Cards is one that has built in um, directions for tasks. Um, it's kind of limited as far as, you know, is it going to be the actual task that you want, but you might have some things in there that would be helpful. Trello is actually just a list app, like a list making app, but it's just very versatile. So I'll show you how I have that set up as a, as a task direction. And then Can Plan is actually a free app um, out of Canada. And it is specifically created to create, to make task directions with um, audio and um, visual support for individuals. <clears throat> So I will go ahead and share my, my iPad again. Okay. So Magnus Cards <clears throat> is this red smiley face here. So here are the different categories. So these are all kind of, um, independent living, social skills based. So you might see some other things in here that would be of, of interest to you. Um, but there is um, the cleaning, click on the cleaning one. And there's, it, there's below each um, set of cards, there's a download button, meaning you could download it and have it available when you're not online, just in case you need to know that. So here we have um, cleaning the toilet. So if I, tap that. It's showing that there are eight cards. <clears throat> um, I'm going to tap the audio. First, wash your hands. I think that's a robotic voice. Um, now, these are not ones that you can modify. So Magnus cards are created by um, different companies. Um, and, and sometimes they have their, um, their product in there. But these are, you know, it is uh, something that is free that's just built in, so. Um, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time in here because I feel like if that's not what your tools or your toilet looks like, then it's not the most helpful. Um, but like I said, you can explore some of this and see if there's something that would be helpful for you to not have to create your own, um, to have it, have it ready to go. Um, <clears throat> here you can see like the travel one. This is what I mean. Like there's different companies or like say airports that create their own. Um, good to know if you're going to that airport and you need um, that kind of a support for an individual, but um, also kind of limited. So that's Magnus cards. Um, but next, 
is, oh yeah, Trello, I have to go back out for that. Here's Trello, this blue one with the two um, rectangles in it. And so Trello is based on these different boards. Each one of these is a board and then I, I'll click on it and it will open it. And then it will have, um, I'm actually gonna turn it the other direction. You can see it better. Um, has different lists within the boards. So this would be a list and you can, um, they don't all look like this, but I specifically added photos in here. Um, so you can just have it be like a, a checklist or a list of things to do. But this way, when it's set up like this, you can um, <clears throat> you can create steps for a task. And so this just means that this one has just had this um, description written in and then the photo. So the first um, getting ready is to gather your supplies when you're going to sweep the floor. And then um, this one, I'll click. I'm going to click on this one so you can see what's in what this looks like when you create a card. This one, um, sweep all areas of the room, and then there is a checklist. So if you wanted to make a, you know, for someone that could read, you wanted to make a list of things, and they would check them off when they did them. You can also move these around. So if I put my finger on that one, I can slide it down, and it would be below the one before it, and like that and then finish up, put away supplies. If you want to, you can take each of these and you can slide them over into the done. Well, that's not, I mean, if that's helpful for the person, but it's not necessarily what how this is set up because this is set up to be looked at in the stages of the different um, steps in the task. <clears throat> so that's Trello and that's how you use that. Chores on this. There you can see what it looks like if it's just um, text. But Trello is also something that you can share with um, others. You just add permissions and you can share it. So you could have, it's kind of useful for that. You could create a, um, a task list for a chore and then share it with the other person. Um, and then both of you could make changes to it. <clears throat> so the sharing uh, capability is nice. And then the next one is called Can Plan. And this is a really great app. This is this is free. It was created by the, um, a university in Canada. And um, some of these are just built in. So just sort of like as a demo. So here's the wash clothes one. Um, so there's a photo. There's a description of the task. And if you can see at the bottom, uh, mine's covered by my Zoom. Uh, menu, but if you can see at the bottom, there's a button that you tap on that says speak and it will speak the words. I'm going to go ahead and push start. It goes to the first picture. So I'm going to hit speak now. That was not loud enough, so I'll try it again. Here we go. Place laundry into machine. Okay, probably heard that. <clears throat> So the, like I said, this is the one that was just um, built in, but you can see that the benefit of it, this is that you can take your own photos and you can add your own text. Um, and then you can also do a setting where the um, text would be read out automatically when you get to each photo. So you don't have to hit the, the speak button. Um, so we're, but you can see the level of detail we're going through this. Um, and then we get to the end of the task, say done. Now, the one that I created is called load dishwasher. And so in order to do that, I went and I took pictures of different steps of loading the dishwasher. And so I had all those pictures and then I was able to go in and create it. So there's the, the first one. Start it. And then um, let me go back and it will probably be more helpful just to show you how it was made. Um, so I go into edit mode. Um, 
seems to be lagging a little bit. Mm -hmm. Paul, let me know if you're having um, video problems. I might need to reshare. I on my iPad, I have um, the it's editing the task, but it's not showing up on my screen. Yeah, it still says the the main okay. task list. It doesn't I'm have the edit in there. Stop it and start the share again. See if that helps. Hopefully. Well, I didn't change anything about my connections. Huh. The iPad is having stage fright. Uh, <laughs> while, while you're um, troubleshooting that, we did have a question that okay. I was just actually Great. trying to find the answer to, and I thought I knew. Um, is there a reset on Trello? So after you check off the tasks, can you reset it? I just tried doing I, it and I can't find it. I don't think there is. I mean, wouldn't that be great? But the reason is that it, Trello is not, we're using it for that purpose, but it's not created specifically for that purpose to be a, like a task um, reminder list. So Trello is really created to be a list um, sort of uh, boards and lists for, you know, uh, to-do lists and creative ideas and shared between teams and such, but I don't think there's a reset. So that's why um, you would have to go back and move them back into their spaces. Um, and which actually makes this can plan a more appropriate for the task um, list um, use because it is more linear in that way. Now my iPad just isn't even showing up at all. Okay. Okay. Success. Okay. So I am in the edit mode now. So here's load dishwasher. Good. Okay. So you can remove here. You could remove a step over here. You can slide them up and down. That's kind of nice to add a new step. Um, I will just show you how you do that. Cause I just want you to know how easy it is to do it. I say add a photo, um, choose an existing photo. It's going right into my photos. I have some there, I'll just choose that one. I tap at the bottom where it says add the text description. And I know that whatever I type is gonna be read out loud so I can do as much or as little detail as I want. I can say scrub the crusty stuff from the, if this is what your dishwasher requires, from the skillet before loading it. So that's a longer description than I might normally put, but then I'm done editing. <clears throat> and then that task is there. I just go up here to the top and I hit save. And then I go and I say done editing. And it, you can also see that as you are creating your task list that um, you can take the photos at that time. You can do it at the same time. I thought it was easier to go and take a bunch of photos and then build the task list, but whatever works for you. You know, if you're down at your washing machine and you put the clothes in and you wanna take a picture of the next step. Um, so then here's load dishwasher. I can uh, choose any of those to speak, show specifically how you put the silverware in, just really break it down really detailed. And then, um, yeah. And especially when it comes to things that have the buttons and the different choices, it's just really, really helpful, like with the washing machine or dishwasher or the coffee pot, whatever. 
Um, so that is can plan. And um, if you click on that link to that site, you will see they also have some other it's a, a Canadian um, program where they specifically make um, apps for adults to support um, people with disabilities for independence. So there's some other ones, there's can work. And I noticed there were some new ones in there. So go check that out if, if those are of, of interest to you. Okay. Well, I might not stop sharing my iPad um, and uh, just go into my next ones just in case we have any problems here. The next category um, is uh, visual schedules and similar but a little different. So I'm gonna go ahead and share those. Um, the first one is this FTVS, which stands for first then visual schedule. <clears throat> Um, so these are the different sort of like routines or um, task lists. So I'm going to tap on this Saturday chores. And then um, these along the bottom, you can see the different um, views. So they're basically different ways that you can view or interact with this task list. And again, you can add your own photo. Um, so this one, um, I can I can tap on the box and show that I've done it and go to the next swipe up. Or I'm going to go across the bottom here and tap on the different views so that you can see what they look like. Kind of nice. So first then, so it's showing you what's coming next. I like this one too, if that's helpful to see the whole list. Um, I... Uh, put it in the envelope. It's kind of satisfying. So I put my finger on it, I grab it over. Uh, I just emptied the trash, grab that over. Or um, uh, to do and then done list. So again, start laundry, slide it over. So now I'm going to go back to home just so you can see. Um, <clears throat> these are set up. I'm going to open the edit. I have to go to edit mode in order to show you how they're created. And then up here again, I tap on edit. So I can slide these around to different orders. But I also want to show you. Come on, open up. What it looks like to add an item. So that's what this box is. You can type in whatever description you want. You can add a photo. Um, there you go. You can use their stock images. You can use the camera. You can use your your um, photos you've already taken. Um, and then you can also attach a video or make a specific sound. Yeah, so that done. And then I'm gonna um, save and go out of edit mode. So that is the first then visual schedule. Um, and then the other one, which is actually made by the same company is called the Visual Schedule Planner. That's this one here. Open that one. <clears throat> Both of these, you can have a video that you attach. So if you have video support for the task. Um, and uh, before I do that, I'll just show you that this one is a little bit more um, like a calendar the visual schedule planner. You can view it as the day, how it is now, or the week. Again, they also have, you know, it's a um, nice visual with the icons and everything, or the month, just kind of a lot, but um, <clears throat> go back to day. Um, here's tomorrow. So up here in the right-hand corner is the edit button. And this, um, again, you can see lots and lots of detail that you can add to this. So you choose in the day, the start time, how often it repeats, setting up a reminder. But over here on the right, <clears throat> you can add a photo, you can add a sound, you can create a new sound, select a sound. Um, you can link to a video clip. Um, oops. 
So I think I did. did I edit. Oh, it's a little. It actually is very robust, and I always have I always get a little bit lost when I'm in here. But if you're using it to set up a a task instruction, it is really really um, helpful. But because there's so many different um, details that you can add, um, <clears throat> I don't see where my video is right now, but that's okay. So that is visual schedule planning. And this is kind of nice for people that like to know what's coming up. You have a nice visual that shows you can have your different tasks, your different um, things, activities on there. Okay, I'm going to go back to my PowerPoint now. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. Okay, I do have a few um, resources here. These are also listed in the handout, I think. Yeah, they are. <clears throat> for um, just some suggestions for places to find um, pre-made videos or um, task directions. Um, Instructables is a nice one. Um, <clears throat> you can go into uh, WikiHow and you can search, you know, how to clean a window, um, how to wash the dishes, you know, some different things are available. And of course, YouTube. And here are the two that I just showed, the visual schedule apps. <clears throat> and then, um, like I said, um, can plan, excuse me, <clears throat> a quick, quick drink of water. <clears throat> can plan and the two that I just showed are um, Apple only. So I do have um, several in there that are alternatives that would work um, for an Android platform. And I can uh, show one of those real quick. Um, before you dive into there, I have a question that I thought I'd throw at you um, from Deborah. Is there an app that will automatically roll a task to the next day if not completed? And I'm, uh, I don't know, I'm stumped in thinking it. There are, there are many, I just can't think of them off the top of my head right now. So I was wondering if you did. If it's not completed, it would automatically roll to the next day. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. I can't think of anything. No, everything's oh, um, like schedule based. Go ahead. Um, Elise or Elise or whatever it is, the thing that um, uh, Elizabeth uses a lot. It's an online one. We don't have that on, on the list. Let me put it on. I think I that one does it. Um, E-L-I-S-I. -I. There, I just put the link in the, in the chat. That's what she uses as like a, a rolling like her daily yeah planning thing okay okay good um actually the one that i am going to show real quickly um <clears throat> is called is right here it's called really routines that is on android um this one is interesting because it does i mean it wouldn't automatically roll i don't think but it does have it's set up to have a parent mode and a kid mode <clears throat> so if you saw, so I think you can see progress on something. So as the parent, you can go in and like repeat it or move it to the next day, I think. So anyway, um, this is called a visual timer. <clears throat> Here you can see what the, what it looks like. So these are all created and you can remove the different steps, but this is a, like a, a bedtime routine. And you can put in your own photo and you can set the amount of time. Um, I just have to remember this is this is new to me. I just found this. This is me. Okay. One, two. <clears throat> I just can't remember how to start it. 
because it has specific times, a uh, specific, uh, here we go. No. <clears throat> it has a specific time in there that it will start, which is kind of nice for a morning routine or a bedtime routine. <laughs> um, so each of these, this is what it looks like when you're setting it up and you're selecting, you can type in what it's called, you can change that icon and you can choose the amount of time like that. And I don't know why I can't remember how to make it start. Shoot. Um, okay, anyway. Um, and this, I think they, they have a one month free trial. So you can, you know, have some time to really experiment with it and try it. This button down here at the bottom um, with the two little people is how you switch from, um, oh, there we go. I was in the, I was in the setup. I was in the setup. So you can switch between what they call parent and, and kid. Um, whoa, there we go. <laughs> So that's what this looks like, little, a little card that pops up, a little sound. And then um, there's this timer in here showing you the amount of time. <clears throat> Some of them you can set it so that you can't move on until that time is up. Like for the tooth brushing one, it makes you do it for two minutes. This one, I think I can swipe it to the left um, and say that it's done. And then it brings up the next one. And then another nice thing is that you set, you can control the total amount of time, like the start time and the end time, but then um, the total amount of time for a routine to be um, taken, to take, I mean. Um, so if like the morning routine has to start at a certain time and be, be done when you have to be somewhere. Um, so anyway, this is really, I think it has a lot to it. It's nice. Um, and I just wanted to pop it up there real quick to show it because it does also work on Android and has some pretty nice features. Back out of there. And again, I'm gonna show one more thing um, for my audio um, and visual task prompts. So on the iPad, um, uh, the first thing I was gonna show is just using Siri. So my iPad, um, if you're not familiar with using um, smart speakers or um, audio commands, on my iPad, you can see right down here is where Siri is. And I have it turned on. So this button right here is turned on so that I don't have to push the button or touch the iPad in order for it to listen to me. I just say the command. Um, so I'm gonna go back out of there and I just say, hey Siri, Remind me to put my clothes in the dryer at 3 p.m. Okay, added the today's reminders. And there it is. So that's nice. That reminder will come on at 3 p.m. And um, uh, I turned it off on my phone so that it wouldn't hear me also, but that's, um, that's how Siri works. If you set it to just listen to you anytime, you can um, do that on the go. <clears throat> Okay, now I'm gonna take this off. <clears throat> I can go to my next slide. Hey, okay, oh, no, don't say it, she'll start listening. Okay, and then I also have um, Alexa. So we have two different um, devices in our lending library that are available to borrow. And that's kind of nice because you can borrow it and find out whether you know it's going to be helpful or not. This is the Amazon Echo Dot. They keep changing the design of it all the time. But anyway, that's what this is. They also have an Echo um, Show that has a screen on it. So that's available to borrow. And then there's also the Google-based um, reminders. And it's kind of helpful for Google, especially that it doesn't listen until you say the hey word in front of it, because a lot of us talk about Google all the time, unfortunately. Um, so I do have um, this one pictured on the slide is the one that we have at our lending library. We can we loan that out and you can um, you just log in with your smartphone and you set up to your Google account. And then I'll just show you the one that I have here. This is the one that 
that I have at home, which is kind of little, it's just a little Google Home. Um, it's a pretty small screen, but it's still kind of nice. So you can have this and I can say, hey, Google. Hey, Google, show me a video of how to clean a window. Here are some videos. I don't know if you can hear them. I have it turned down kind of low. Um, okay. And then I tapped on it, it's showing an, an advertisement, but um, it's it brought up videos and I can just play them from there. <clears throat> but I'm gonna stop it. He, he wants to tell me how to stop. There we go, how to clean a window. I guess the easiest way is to tell Google to stop playing it. Um, so yeah, so hey Google, and I know like you can see in this picture, a lot of people use it for recipes. Hey Google, stop playing now. Um, it's really helpful until it's not. Um, so um, yeah, so you can use it for different kinds of instructions. You can you can have it open YouTube, whatever. Um, <clears throat> so um, I kind of rushed through that, but I'm hoping people are kind of familiar with some of these smart uh, speaker devices, but maybe hadn't thought about using them for reminders or task directions. So I think that's a uh, helpful, helpful thing. And um, I'm gonna go ahead. We have just a few minutes left. And if there are any um, questions I can answer, I'd be happy to do that. I'll tell you a little bit more about our lending library. Um, we have, and the Simon Technology Center, we have a number of different services. Um, one is just information and referral by phone or email. Another is the lending library, which you can see a couple of pictures here of some of the variety of items that we have in the lending library. And um, you can also go to our website to learn about that. It is available to people outside of the Twin Cities metro area because we are mailing things. Um, and the family membership is $50 a year. And an organization membership is $200 a year. But that can, organization can be large, can be like an entire school district um, for that. So it's a pretty good deal. And you can borrow up to four items at a time as a family or individual. And like I said, we do um, mail those out or we're doing curbside um, pick up and drop off at Pacer in Bloomington. Um, please send us an email or um, you know, check out the website if you would like more information about that. We also do free consultations. So these are technology consultations where you are paired with uh, an AT specialist, such as myself or Paul. And we learn about um, what kind of needs you have, what kind of things you're looking for. And then we put together sort of a, a demonstration and um, list of technology for you. And we schedule those. Right now we're doing those over Zoom. Um, in the future, we will go back to doing those in person, we hope. But doing them over Zoom is nice because that also means we can do those for people outside of the um, Twin Cities metro area. <clears throat> And then we also do individualized trainings for specific um, software or device needs. So an hour goes by really quickly and um, I hope you uh, saw some interesting uh, tools, apps to uh, help you. And if you have any questions, um, you can also email me or stc at pacer.org. Um, you can also call, although right now our, our, our building is still closed, so the phone calls are a little bit less efficient than email because we all are all working from home. And um, those uh, you can leave a voicemail, but it, it kind of has to get passed along to us. And since we're getting close to the end here of our time, I just want to uh, request that you please complete our workshop evaluation on SurveyMonkey. Um, Paul should have put that link in the chat. And you do need to submit that. 
in order to get a certificate of attendance. Once you submit that evaluation, a little thank you message pops up and there is a, a link for you to click on that will directly give you the um, certificate of attendance that you can download or print. That is not available if you're watching this in the future as an archive webinar. <clears throat> and now we are at three o'clock. So any questions or comments for me to share, Paul? I'm not seeing any open questions. I think I got to all of them. Well, it's possible I missed some, but, <laughs> but I don't think so. I think I got them all. Great. Excellent. All right. I see someone's looking for the link. I'll throw that in there one more time. Great. Oh, that's the wrong link before I exit out of here. Okay. Thank you for joining us today. There, just put the Survey Monkey link in there again, in case you don't see it in the chat, because there's a lot of comments, so you might have to scroll up to, to see it, but I just put it there now. And it'll also be at the end, I believe, too, when they exit out of here. Does it pop up, Sarah? Well, I, it's supposed to. I, I've never actually okay. done it that way. <laughs> I don't think we're able to see what it does. Okay. Analysts. All right. Well, I will go ahead and end for everyone. Great. Thank you, Paul.